Welcome back to the diary. Sorry there's a bit of a delay on this one, quite a long delay, but there's two reasons for that. One of them I'll go into later in a bit more detail, but the first one was, to basically put it blunt, I thought I wasn't going to catch any more carp from Burfield this year. I fished on the old speedboat point, done a bit of tire on there, had a couple in that night session, in the same night, and then after that, yeah, nothing, and I, I was struggling really bad, couldn't get bite anywhere, the fish is rock hard. Like, the lake's rock hard, man, and I can't really bring a fishing video out on Burfield without no fish in it, so sort of wrote that off. I floated about here and there, done a bit on Bayswater, done a weekend or done a weekend and one night on Bayswater, nothing. So I managed, uh, I thought I'd get a winter ticket right on a water in the leave alley, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit that for the winter when it gets cold. But yeah, right, it sort of went off last weekend on Burfield, to be fair. I come down on the Friday as I do, and I thought, ah, like the big murder swim was free, so I put my van in there, got a bucket out of my motor, walked round to the bomb, because the bomb and the compound swims, get, you get a bit of open water, and that's where the majority of the fish have been like getting caught and stuff, over the year, basically. Like, they like it out there, and it's, ba it, it's, it's basically a two-swim water, Burfield, in the spring and in the autumn, so if you're only one of them swims, you're not, really, uh, you're not really confident, you know what I mean? So, anyway, I walked round there with my bucket, Got round to um, Alsatian Bay area, and instead of turning right to go up to the bomb, like the point, I went left and went to the where you down the lane where you park your cars. I thought, oh, I'll see who's down there, see if there's any motors there, and it, I recognised the van that I knew, and also a geezer loading up his barra. So I thought, ah, oh, look, there's no chance. Like, there's only one swim worth gaining round this end, and that's the bomb. So I wrote the bomb off, and I didn't go up to the actual swim to look. So I, I just walked straight back to the murder swim. Right, anyway, later on that night, Dan Rigby, the old bailiff, phoned me up and went, Greg, I went, what? He went, the bomb was free when you walked round, someone else was in here. Right? I was like, what? He went, yeah, yeah, you must have, uh, yeah. I went, well, there's someone loading up a barrel now. He went, yeah, but they've gone on Pinswood. I went, you're joking. It was someone else, one of the ten changers went out on Pinswood Point. So I could have got in the bomb. So now, I'm sitting in the uh, big murder swim, two rods out, loads of weed in front of me, you can't really fish far out, straight out in front. So I was fishing half-heartedly, I thought, oh, I'll go baseball in the morning, bit upset, you know what I mean, bit like, oh, kicking myself, should have just walked up there, I would, I would have had a good chance of catching the carp this weekend then. It's not very often you get in them swims. So yeah, I'm sitting there, and then about 11 o'clock that night, an absolute chunk boshed out to me left, and I thought, hang up at right, that is like something serious there. You know what I mean? That's that's a show, 100% carb. I could be onto something. So the following day, I put a rod out left where I didn't fish that night, obviously. So I put a rod out, and then uh, yeah, that night I managed my first bite from the spot. And my God, like, it sort of kicked off. So we're going to go back to um, last weekend. I haven't got much footage on this basically because I didn't film nothing prior to this. I thought Burfield was over for the year, so I'm sort of backtracking now. I'm filming about, I'm talking now about last week and it's already happened, so I've got the fish footage and stuff. But Dan Rigby, who had the last laugh there, and all you Burfield boys on the old banter group, giving me the big one. <laughs> rubbing me hands together now, lads. But yeah, check out these two. Ooh, ooh. The TT. That's Marie Marie. Monster pecs on that. Lovely carp. Well, I said I'd be happy with five fish for the year on Burfield, and this is my fifth fish. I thought it was going to be my last, but I've got another one in the net. A nice common, not the Burfield common, but it's good all the same. So we'll slip this one back, and we'll have a look at that. £37.8 ounces. Proper brute of a carp, massive pegs, massive tail. Hooked it and couldn't stop it. And uh, yeah, the pegs, mate, just goes to show. It's, <laughs> it's a fighting machine, 100%. Right, let's get the next one out.
check this one out, a little bit bigger than I thought. <laughs> 40, 40 pound 10 ants, Burfield Common. Not the common I'm after, 20 pound short with that. But pff, this is one of the proper ones. Got my old mate Rupert Whiteman on his way down, take some stills. There's only half hour down the road near Halton, so we'll get some proper photos of this one. Made up with this. What an absolute belter. Tiny little mouth. <sighs> Mega pleased. Thank you. Now go get your mother. Happy days. Well, yeah, 37 and a half pound mirror. Classic Simo strain, Burfield beast. And then that common, 40 pound 10 hands. Now, I've spoke to a couple of people, they've seen it. I try to keep, keep these captures pretty quiet, to be fair. But a few people have seen the photo, and apparently, you can't, you can't go at me for this, but I've been told that the fish was last seen, last caught, six years ago at 36 pound. And I've been told again yesterday that it's probably not the same fish, and we don't know when it was last caught. It could have been longer than six years ago, but I ain't want to say because I ain't showing them. But by the time this video was out, I would know for sure. So if I catch that fault, I could probably catch the Burfield Common. Well, not probably. I know I can. I've just got to fish it and do what I'm doing. If I can catch one of the rare commons like that, the Burfield Common ain't as rare as that, believe it or not. This place it throws up fish here and there and you wouldn't believe that they've gone missing for six years, seven years, eight years, ten years even. And the Burfield Common ain't as rare as that. So, fingers crossed, if I just keep doing what I'm doing, I might actually catch the Burfield Common. So, you've got to think positive on that one. And yeah, following on from that, I've decided to stay the Sunday night. I thought, I can't go to work. I had two fish Saturday night. I've had four fish all year. And I've had two fish in the night, so I stayed, right? And I managed another two fish. So, we'll go back to that. Well. When it rains, it pours. Literally, raining now, camera's getting soaked, but who cares? Third fish of the session, three fish now, off the back of that one show Friday night. It's Sunday, Sunday afternoon, I'm gonna stay tonight. Sorry Vince, I said I'd never blow work out, but it's gotta be done. Burfield Common is at large still, I ain't been out all year, and to have three fish, I've only had four fish all year up until now, I've had three, so got to make the most of that. But yeah, 30 pound, eight ounce, root of a common. An old parrot mouth, been through the walls that one, through a lot of weed beds and stuff. But yeah, so you go up to the shop, get some supplies, come back, get the rods out for the night. Oh, it's a dream session, this one. Mega happy. Sit my back then. my fourth carp now. I've had four fish all year up until this weekend and I've managed to catch four fish in two nights now so mega pleased with that. It's all paid off and yeah don't normally blow work out but when you've had two fish in a night and it was Saturday night you've got to, you've got to stay in there, oh, you know what I mean. I've never done it before. I never probably will do it again unless it's on Burfield but it's paid off. I've caught another two carp so yeah eight fish for the year now so far. I thought I was going to finish on four. I really didn't think I was going to catch any more, so it just goes to show. That one show Friday night, like I said, it's paid off with four fish. It's from an area from the Big Murder Swim that I don't think anyone fishes. You've got the main spots out between the islands, but there's a lot of weed there. And this rod, where I've had my four fish from, was totally out of the way and probably not even in this swim. So it's paid off massively. Put it back. I'm going to go home today. It's Monday, got work Tuesday, so can't take the piss that much. So I'll dedicate this carp to Vince. I'll tell you what, I might name it Vince, what do you reckon? We'll call this one the Frog, yeah? Oh, Vince Froggy. This one's for you, mate. You've now got a Burfield carp. <laughs> the Frog. If you're watching this, Burfield boys, this is the Frog. <laughs> right, let's put her back. And hopefully we'll get another one. Be common. 60 pound common, yeah? Thank you so much. What a session. Ta-da. Well, when I left that, that day on the Monday, put a bit of bait out, just 
just to store a few bites or keep a few uh, fish there feeding, trying to keep them in the zone for when I got back. But yeah, four fish in a session on a weekend session with well, a free nighter. Uh, that's unheard of for me this year. I've done, I've done four fish all year, fishing all round the pit, fishing most weekends. So to have four fish in three nights, that's a mega result. We're back up to date now. It's just started raining, so I'm going to put the camera camera away and hope you enjoy the rest of this video. I'm hoping there's a few more in store. Fingers crossed on that one. I'm pretty sure there may be. Well, it's Wednesday, my second day back at work, and I can't even function. I need to be back over Burfield, so. It's lucky I've got myself a uh, new job, fitting fire sprinklers, and my boss is actually a, a carp angler. So I've asked him if I can have a couple of days off, Thursday, Friday, try and get back in the murder swim. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go, go home now, get back in the murders. Hopefully, fish are still there. But I can't think straight until I get back in there. I need to blank in there, and then I'll be happy then. I'll be uh, back to work normal. But yeah, that's my life. That. That's an easy bit that it does get a bit awkward, a bit hard. But yeah. It's good. I've lost a lot of money this week. I'm self-employed, still got a boss, but obviously if I have a day off, then I don't get paid. And two days work, when your head ain't in the game, it's in the carp game, the big carp game. You know what I mean? The Burfield Commons still at large, so right, you know what I mean? I lose my right arm for that fish. Money, money is money. That common. If I catch that, it's the one in it. Semi-retire. Gonna have some fun somewhere. Catching loads of carp. Because Burfield, that will ruin a man, that place. I, I want to get that fish. Sooner rather than later. And judging from the weather out there and all the big fish getting caught around the country, it's good a good time as any. I don't think it's been out this late in the year, but you never know. Never say never. So, Spring the red there. <laughs> it's gonna be a spring the red. Not quite yet. First fix. Little guided tour of my job, yeah? That's what we do. Plastic pipe. Glue it together, easy. But yeah, we'll catch you in a bit. Burfield band. Come on. Pray for the murder swim, because I'm having days off work. If it ain't free, then uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty much of a waste, isn't it? But there you go, we'll see how it goes. Get me out of there. <laughs> well, I'm going to give you a little guided tour of what I do every Friday. Got to leave work, North London at the minute, three different trains home. Get home, load up my van and all that. I ain't going to show you all that, but then another couple of hours trip to Burfield. It's probably sit, from the time I leave work, it's probably five hours till I get to Burfield. <laughs> Mental, innit? I just saw that shit out. But I don't want to leave any gear in the van. I mean, yeah, check this out. Seem to find myself talking to the powers that be, awake in the shade and shadowed under towering trees, admiring the sea, inhaling fumes of flowers to breathe. Jet lag dies, are begging for an hour to sleep. Although my bloodshot whites and irises, they never find any. Clock stop at times where this sunshine could blind many. Although my eyes are heavy, they won't be closing soon. Cause I know that time waits for nobody, I suppose it's true. We make corrosive tunes through acid taps and vocal boosts. To see the flashing lights of photo shoots, we make emotive moves. I say whatever I feel to vent a rhyme. So I can still invent the lines and stay close to the friends of mine Cause we all recognise real is what my father says And I'll be sticking to this phrase until I pass away Overwork and no sleep is just another way to die slow But I'll just keep on going strong and never let my eyes close Five o'clock with the lights off In the view with a vampire Sleep is for the living and not a utensil that I require I swear I said that I sleep when I'm dead Who's on the beat upon the feature with Ed? It's DV to the Z Overtired, pal face on Michael Myers Bags underneath my eyes can show the baggage I've acquired And over time within this maze I think you'll find You'll never find a peace of mind you seek to find until you're dying Cause I've got too much to stay awake for To sleep or even take four Seconds out of the game, it's time for wage war Scissors, grab a sword And sharpen up your hunting knives Do psychopathic lyricists the driving on the hunt tonight I'm hailing from the Essex and the East London borderline Villains never sleep, the mastermind in all sorts of crimes Be wide awake just like you snorting lines Or get left more fun like you just see the ghost of Jesus walking by 
And trouble steals thoughts from a restless mind for free It could be The times I'm living in I never sleep When trouble steals thoughts from a restless mind for free It could be Brush my teeth every night, but still I wake up with a bad mouth And the background is my past and my presence will bring it back out To live with the rap style, I flow, I live with the rap style And those that hate me call me wrong, but they won't sit in too easy Believe me, I'm snake-minded, be within this great time Beyond minimum wage, life is a prison escape that I'm in It's all to do with timing, not the label that you sign with Then my mates are doing fine, but then they never put the time in I try to hide my cold side, like when I flip my pillow Some of the songs I write are real, because the chart is filled with silicon I'm still broke, without the money for a macro Living out of three bags, not on about my cash flow Opposite of sober, cause I never did my homework Which has got me on a sofa, no degree but growing older I play the fool to catch the wise, I will never tell a lie I wait then take deep breaths, try to never die Two guys with the same view, keep it tight like Scrooge Making metaphors flow and move like typhoons on tunes And if we got our eyes on you, we'll catch you while you snooze Time to lapse in while you're catching zeds, the masses like to move Scan the situation, analyse information And then decide what probably is most practical to do Driven young gentlemen, I've hardly changed my bed sheets at all Over the last 12 months, cause I haven't slept in them I'm coming home, the lights are on, your rights are wrong, so I'm correcting them We got the fans all like, oh well, Steps and Edward Less Did you bloody expect from them? In the end, sleep deprivation might just be a detriment Fighting through writer's block from 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock In no way will I ever waste a second of the time I got I keep my pupils engaged but I'm only trying to stay awake When trouble steals thoughts from my best listening for free Right, there we are, back in the murder swim Six and a half hours later since I left site So, it's a long old trek Proper long, but that's what I do every Friday It's not Friday today obviously, it's Wednesday But, Fridays, it's a little bit longer because you've got more traffic, rush hour and that I do leave site earlier on Fridays, but you still get a lot of traffic. No matter what time you leave on a Friday, you're still going to get the M25 to contend with, isn't it? No matter what time, it's gridlocked. It's a joke, that road, in there. But we're here. It's free, thankfully. So we're going to get the rods out. And, uh, yeah, see what we're going to do. Fingers crossed. we pick it up from where we left off. Because uh, a lot of money at stake here. <laughs> in there. All right, let's get cracking. Welcome to the Bivy. It's now Thursday night. Obviously, I've done last night, Wednesday night. No action. Caught a couple of tufties today. So, not ideal, but something's eating the bait, isn't it? But yeah, I've done, obviously, I've done last night on the blanks, and I thought, oh, no, I've, I've had two days off work. I've lost a lot of money. You know what I mean? I thought I was going to catch, to be fair. I thought I was going to come here and have one last night, but I never. Anyway, my mate Neil Mundy's turned up. He's next door to Little Murders. Come around and see me earlier. And then he left and he went, I'll come back in a bit, I've got some beers on the way. I went, alright, sweet. So he's gone. And then uh, I've got a bite. Alright, so I'm playing it, it got weeded up and that. You know, I'm playing it in. It took a while to get in to be fair, because all the weed. You know, I've got it in the net. And then uh, I thought, oh, Neil's going to turn up, Neil's going to turn up. Like, it's a good mate of mine, oh, I'll get on well with him, he's a proper good lad. But after having them four fish, a few people found out, so now I've just got to tell no one. That's, that's Burfield for you, isn't it? Like, the big carp scene, like, if you People are going to want to get on the fish and that. And I know Neil likes his swim, and he will go in here. But... Either way, I've just got to keep your mouth shut so no one knows. So basically, yeah, I've got it in the net. I'm thinking, oh, I need to get my boat, uh, my bait boat back out. Put my rod back out, it's got all the lights on that. Anyway, he's phoned me up and went, you coming around for a beer or a while? I went, yeah, yeah. Just got to uh, get my rod back out. I've just had another tufty, you know. And he believed it, so yeah. It weren't a tough day. It was a nice £27.6 ounce common. So I've just gone, gone round to him, had a can of Stella, and he said he's going to get his head down for the night. It's about 10 o'clock now. So we're going to give it half an hour, wait for him to start snoring, and then we'll get the fish out, we'll do the photos, and then we'll slip it back. I can put my mat and my uh, waisting and all that back in the van, and no one will know any different. So I might go and see him tomorrow, get a coffee off him or something. He bought me a McDonald's earlier as well, so I feel a little bit guilty, but. It's nothing personal, Neil. You know what I mean? It's, it's the big carp scene, isn't it? That's how it is these days. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, I think I'm. I'm confident on another fish tonight. 
I had that on my right hand rod, and all the bites last week were on the left hand rod. So I'm hoping, car, I'm hoping there's another one in store, but we'll see how it goes. I'm buzzing with this, like, ninth fish now for the season. Can we make it 10? Got another three nights? I'm pretty sure I can. It was all worth it. All that getting home from work, rushing about, six hours, whatever it took to get here, five and a half hours, it's paid off. That's the main thing, it's paid off massively. So, we'll see you in a bit. Well, as Neil snores, we've got a nice 27 pound, six ounce common. Another common for the uh, collection. Surely it won't be long before the big one comes along, eh? Wishful thinking. Playing up a bit. How's that, eh? Mega, quite dark, this fish. Can't really see in the dark. The old lights on and that, but this fish is pretty black, to be fair. Black fins and that. Mega carp. Another common for the Burfield collection. Hopefully, we'll get the big one. Happy days. Alright, Neil. Alright, mate. How's it going, mate? You alright? I'm oh, good. How are you, Greg? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good. Do you want a coffee? Yeah, please, Greg. Yeah, right, let's get a really one. nice, Greg. Thank you, Greg. That's all right for that McDonald's yesterday. Yeah. yeah all right, mate. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mate. Probably won't happen again. Oh, you don't know, mate. Honestly, thought I was going to catch last night. Oh, you might well catch. Definitely over this side of the lake, don't they? Yeah, mate. <laughs> We're back. It's been a couple of weekends since the last call, but we got down Thursday and ended up in Pikey Corner. Swim down to my left. Couldn't get in big murders. Someone was in here, but he's, thankfully he's left and he's gone to another swim. So I'm back in the spot, back in the zone. But I've been baiting it every Sunday when I pack up, been baiting it before I leave, thinking, yeah, I'll try and get something going. But it's been two weekends now with nothing. So I'm thinking it's slowing down a bit. Temperature's plummeted and we were minus three last night, so it's getting cold. We've got the woolly out, out, jumper, coat, the lot. So winter is finally approaching. Now we're in November now, so it won't be long. And it'll probably shut up shop, no doubt. And I'm going to give it one more weekend probably. And then we're going to hit the other new winter water in the Lee Valley. It's another big pit. Hopefully we'll catch a few out of there, get you a video. But yeah, another reason why this video was delayed. Uh, Basically, I had a deal with Avid, and it was all going through. I'd left Ridge Monkey, got with Avid, but I didn't start until the 1st of November. And this was like October time, start of October. So I thought, right, I won't bother filming anything, I won't bother making another video until I get all my Avid gear, and I'll start fresh. But yeah, I had them four fish that weekend, come back the following weekend, had the other one, and I thought, I've got to make a video on Burfield. I've caught more fish in two weekends than I have all year. How can I not make a video? So I decided I've got to make the video. It's going to be a bit of Ridge Monkey, a bit of Avid. So here we are. Nothing else has occurred. Pretty exciting times with Avid. Got a lot of their gear and it's, it's looking good to be fair. Mega pleased with it and can't wait to put it through its paces. Big farewell to Ridge Monkey. They've looked after me over the years and Dave Levy is a good mate of mine and all the boys and girls at Ridge Monkey. Uh, yeah, I'm going to miss you, but I'm not too far. Like I said, if you if you follow me on Facebook and that and Instagram, I've done a little video. I said I'd use their gear where I can. Stuff like braid and that. Avid don't make braid, so I use the Ridge Monkey braid. Power packs and that. Chargers. Right. I'm still going to use their gear because that's what I use. I'm, I am going to dabble and do a bit on Burners All probably. I want to probably put the Avid gear for his paces before I come back to Burfield in the spring. I want to make sure I can proper give it some weather, you know what I mean? So. We'll see how that goes. I'm sure, sure we'll have a bit of fun over burners. Back to the big murders. It's now Saturday. Last night I spent the spent night in little murders. Couldn't get in here, unfortunately. But that person's gone now. He's gone to another swim. Still a bit of angling pressure about, same old faces, 
but it's slowing up now proper like it's got cold and i don't think there's as many fish getting cold definitely not from our swim definitely not of my area because i've not had nothing now for like three weeks three weekends so i think it's time to move on this is gonna be my last session i'm gonna have a dabble I'm gonna come back in the weekend in december january and february before hitting it hard again march april time next year but you never know i could get get lucky and get a couple in a weekend it does happen on here in the cold weather from areas so we're going to give it a bash I'm, I'm not over yet i'm still going to have a dabble but it's to the lee valley next week i'd just like to say a thank you to ridge monkey again obviously all the fish on this video have been caught on uh ridge monkey gear rm tech size four curves the semi-stiff tungsten hook link material it's done well obviously their braid and stuff also I've not used, I've not got my new Avid rods and reels out yet. I've still got my old Shimano ones down there. Done me well they have over the years. But the reason I haven't changed is because I know my tackle and how it works. And I knew I was only going to be here for another two or three weekends. And where I've been catching, I'm not going to start changing my tackle and changing my rods and reels. Just in case. Because I've done it before. I've learnt my lesson. Back on Kingsmead 1 a few years back, I got some new rods and reels. And yeah, I was catching consistently, doing really well. And then I got the new rods and reels out and I was getting hook poles, getting a fish halfway in and the hook was pulling. And that's because I weren't used to the rods. That was a lot stiffer to what I was used to. And that was the reason. So I'm not, I'm not willing to do that on Burfield. I'm going to start using my new gear on my winter water where the fish don't mean, they mean a lot to me still, but nothing like a Burfield carp. You know what I mean? One bite in here is precious and I ain't willing to lose it. So we're going to get used to them rods and reels. I know my own gear. I know how much I can give, how much I can take. And I ain't gonna test them out, basically, when it's last knockings on Burfield. So we'll try them out next week and then for the rest of the winter. Obviously, I've got to catch a few fish, get a feel for them, but yeah. Another thing, I'd like to say a big thank you to Nigel Sharp, because obviously, he's the reason I called these videos the burns. The Burfield burn, the real Burfield burn, and now the Burfield burn up. <laughs> you know what I mean? He thought I was going to get burnt. Remember that Where's Waddy thing he done? Where's Ellis? He thought that was going to be the end of me. But nah, this year, Sharpie, this was the warm-up, son. It's going to get hot up in Reading next year. I'm going to set the place on fire. <laughs> nah, I don't know about that, but yeah, I was getting a feel for the place. I know a lot more now than what I did at the start. And I can do things certain times of the year and stuff. I know where I need to be and stuff. If it's the same as what this year's been, I know how it's going to be. Whereas this year... I was getting a feel for the place, like I was learning, and I've learned, to be fair, quite a lot. So it's all good. Thanks for that, Sharpie. Big thanks, mate. Another thing, that turn down the light, that's Benny Page tune at the start. Yeah, all right, fair one. A lot of you might not like that. Some of you love it. I do get a lot of comments on my YouTube saying people love my music or my videos, and I get a few trolls slating it. You know what I mean? If you don't like my videos, don't watch them, basically. I don't have to comment shitty comments in the uh, comment box, do you? You know what I mean? If you don't like music, don't watch it. So, but th there's a reason I've done that. All my music on my video, all, all my uh, music on my videos, there's a reason. And if you listen to the lyrics and stuff, it goes. And there's a reason I use Turn Down The Lights because back in, uh, at the end of the summer, on Speedboat Point, there was an, a, sitting there, it was all quiet. There's only a few of us on. The lake was pretty quiet at the time. There's a few of us fishing. And then about half 11 at night, Drum and bass started, proper loud. I thought, oh, someone's got, got St. Gan in the back of their boot or something, a sound system on the blue pole behind me, but it weren't. And then about half one in the morning, it was like thumping. Half one in the morning, a police helicopter was above for like an hour, about an hour, like hovering above. I was like, what? Turned out it was an illegal rave. They'd done it, they'd done it at the start of the year, before I got my ticket, like in the spring. But they'd done it and it was pumping. Anyway, the chopper left. And then all these random ravers, all right, young uns and that in their twenties, come rushing round Burfield, like hiding from the old bill, and they've all gone back to the rave. But it was, it was pretty surreal to be fair, sitting there and then drum and bass rave. But that turned down the lights, that was going on. That that was probably repeated about eight times, and that brought back so many memories. I wanted to wheel me roll and get over there. But I'm glad I didn't, right? Because I did go with it after. And what happened, they shut the M4. There's about 300 people there, they had to shut the M4 both directions because they all started spinning out onto that. There's a local hotel nearby, uh, the Reading Hotel, I think they called it, and it was shaking the windows. Like the sound system they got, fair play to the boys. 
they put on a proper rave light and I was pretty jealous sitting there on my own. I was texting a few people, but I won't get no reply. I was well up for going over there. But next year, if it happens, I'm on it. And it's going on this diary, the Burfield Rave Up, I'll call it. <laughs> but yeah, it's good fun. And uh, that's what that's the reason I use that, uh, that music. So if you don't like it, there was a reason to it. So there you go. But we're going to call it, it's the last night now, but we're going to call it quits on Burfield for the time being. And if I do catch over the winter, then I'll stick the fish on the next video. Don't know what it'll be called yet. Don't know if it's a burn or not, but Sharpie, give me some uh, titles for my next videos next year, yeah? The Burfield, we've had the burn. The Burfield what? I'll let you decide that. And don't say Burntfield, because it ain't burnt me, mate. <laughs> that was a good one. Hashtag Burntfield. <laughs> you done well there. Must admit, he's got some banter, that boy. But we'll see you next time, Ran. Hopefully, we'll get some on the Gannon Lee Valley, get a video for you. But right, until then, it's cheerio. Ta-ta from me. Another thing about this swim in this spot is that you ain't no daisy, are you? My old tufty. <laughs>